Dana Helgard um, with Blake Beckham um, in my studio, and we're going to talk about some art. I have kind of like big conceptual ideas to go into, but uh, maybe first I'm going to ask you a straightforward question. All right. I'll see if I can. Like, describe the piece you just made. The piece I just made? Um, piece I just made in the gallery right now is this large um, concaved uh, mirror um, that I kind of did this geometrical uh, surface painting on. Um, and the concave mirror, I like them because they're, they're remarkably disorienting. Mm -hmm. So as you're kind of entering the space of the mirror, the kind of the zone of kind of reflection um, you end up being, your reflection is inversed, so you raise your right arm and you see your left arm raised in the mirror. Um, or vice versa, you see it's like a true mirror, mm -hmm. which you're not used to seeing. Um, and your eyes can't focus because it's concaved in such a way that the reflection changes so much between the two inches of your eyeballs that your brain can't re-stitch together that information. So it becomes remarkably disorienting. And so kind of with that piece, along with a lot of the other kind of mirror work I'm doing is trying to create this kind of false space that is kind of disorienting and stimulating and kind of wild and kind of hard to rationalize all at the same time, um, hopefully to kind of move, make you think a little bit more about how you actually fit into this space when you see yourself in a space that you see yourself, you recognize it's yourself, but it's really hard to put together how it all connects and why it works the way it works. Mm -hmm. And then the kind of the painting on the surface of it is just another layer that makes it even harder to kind of place yourself in that space. But you see yourself. So it, it's all these mixed signals that you're sending and receiving and kind of trying to conflate that all. It's kind of what I was trying to, to do. Yes. I was disoriented. Good. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes would not focus. And I like what you were saying about, you know, or something that intrigues me about your work is that it, it does call attention to the viewer's place within it, that you have, you have to show up in it. Yeah. And it challenges you to be present inside of it and in relation to the art object rather than sort of passive spectatorship. It, it invites participation in a way that is challenging and intriguing and demands something of you. Yeah, and I think that without you know, your, your involvement in it, it's kind of a benign thing. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a whatever. But when you're there, present in most of my work, I hope, that's what activates it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what I view as the actual kind of moment of art in these things is your reaction, your bodily and mental reaction to the work. The, 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 the things that I put in the room or on the wall are just kind of a facilitator to kind of have that moment of kind of reflection or of kind of awareness or realization about a moment. Yeah, so that leads me to this thing about something that I'm really interested in and that your work elicits for me, thinking about the function or purpose of art one of them being like that that art calls us into our bodies um that it invites us to feel and perceive more expansively uh, and this idea of activating sensation uh, as a way to access more knowing in our bodies is really interesting to me and I mean you're always playing with triggering sensation yeah it's kind of like my kind of it's like the easy way in you know our bodies are designed to sense things like mm -hmm. we are a big mm -hmm. sensing form and so to kind of find those things that activate our bodies very quickly and somewhat predictably I rely on that a lot as a way to kind of enter into your physicality and kind of make you realize you're there mm -hmm. Um, 
it's kind of a cheap trick. Like, I know that you're going to respond to being vibrated because either it's very, very uncomfortable and it weirds you out, or it's, you know, very pleasurable and your body kind of has sinks into that. But I know that, and that's how we're designed. And so kind of using those tools, it's a way for me to kind of break down a barrier and access your kind of physicality and then hopefully put it in context of the space or whatever else is in the room to then, you know, use that moment to help guide an experience that I'm trying to mm -hmm. engineer. Yeah, I think when we can uh, allow ourselves to, to experience sensation or allow sensation to erupt within us, it's this really interesting pathway towards awareness and that that is both an inwardly and an outwardly oriented thing like knowing oneself more intimately but also i think developing sensitivity to others and so it's also really interesting like how art holds a space for people to experience sensation together and that through the vehicle of this artwork we have a shared sensation yeah uh, and that yeah that that that's really profound that that allows me to access my own body but also maybe understand you or share something with you well i think for the most part we're all kind of generally wired somewhat similarly in that way like we respond to that kind of sensation um in different degrees and in, in, in slightly different ways but we we do respond or you know it would be hard to exist if we didn't respond that way and so a lot of what I, I, I'm hoping to do with the, the, the things I put up are, are try to you know, anchor yourself in like a space, a place, and a time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is, is what else you're present with and who else you're present with. All that is part of you know, the space and the place and that kind of the environment as a whole. So kind of hopefully triggering everybody or everything in that environment kind of then kind of gives it this kind of common sensation that is this kind of unifying element. Like, you know, you go to a concert and it's raining, everybody has a better time because you all have that shared discomfort because you're all wet, you're all, mm -hmm. you're all, you're all bonded together by that. So in these situations where, you know, everybody, I, I've had these, some of these installations like the one I did with you, um, where we subjected people to 25 minutes of intense stimulation <laughs> um, physically with kind of vibrating, furniture that you're sitting on and then kind of the, these re intense reflections that were mirroring yourself, you're seeing yourself, you're seeing everybody else, you're seeing you and the other dancers moving and then this kind of fully enveloping, very loud sound, mm -hmm. kind of everybody was in that and everybody was in that together. And then it stopped all at the same time. Everybody was in that silence with themselves together. Mm -hmm. Everybody had that moment where they had to feel themselves more, but they're all doing it together. So there, that was, it's really kind of great thing that I think sometimes I try to do and then sometimes I purposely try to like we you know one person away to have them have a very solitary moment and reflect upon the space mm -hmm. a lot of the work you know like kind of temple grandening a, a piece of art to make people move through it as I want them to mm -hmm. or move through it as I want everybody or you know like kind of peeling one off at a time so they're not conscious that I'm you know, making them do this thing, but like having them think it's their idea to go sit down and have this thing or fork off and have yeah. this thing. I think that's why, I mean, one of the reasons why I respond to sculpture work and installation oriented work, I think is because that type of artist and that like you are paying such careful attention to space the element of space and sight and environment and like I think you're really an, an architect of experience in the way that people who make performances I think we think of ourselves as architects of experience um, mostly dealing with time and I think of you as an architect of experience and you you work with time and especially through sound but mm -hmm but um, your really careful consideration of how a space takes on placefulness by your experience of it, 
how it's populated, uh, how people move through it, and, and in relation to objects and sounds and stimulation. Yeah, well, because so much, because because a lot of these connections are so tenuous. Because it is, I'm, no one's physically holding anybody there. Mm -hmm. You know, the minute that you know something breaks that focus, it all, it's you know, it's it's for nothing, right? Like yeah. you, the minute you're kind of broken out of that moment by some careless, misplaced whatever, mm -hmm. then it's like, why did I why did I do that? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, okay, so. When did mirrors, when did you start with mirrors? Or what was, do you remember in something you were researching or your creative process where you felt like, I'm enamored with this material? Or maybe that's not a word you would use, I don't know. I've never been enamored with it. I So I used to make very figurative sculpture um, using myself as reference. So I was sculpting like my belly. Mm -hmm. So I was taking casts of my belly and then like, you know, kind of modifying them and integrating them into architecture. And my hope was that my belly would be a proxy for everybody's body, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a belly, but nobody's entirely happy with it. And kind of having these, inter, you know, having these, you know, breached people's space in unexpected ways, I thought was interesting at the time. And then I realized that it was a much quicker link to make someone identify with what I put out there, if they weren't having to go through my form, mm -hmm. if I just use theirs. So kind of have like finding something to make people part of the experience quickly. Cause so much of it is about speed with me. It's like if the, the quicker you can identify yourself in a space, I hope that the sooner you can then have an experience with yourself in that space. And then it can be kind of a, a contemplative moment where it takes time but kind of having yourself be part of this thing like that's established mm -hmm. you're you're in the mirror you see yourself then we can think about the moment and the experience from there and so the mirror just um kind of seemed like the logical thing and you know then i was reading about lacanian mirror theory and kind of mirror stage and in, in childhood development where you realize that person in the mirror is you and kind mm -hmm. of like that identification is like you know, seeing yourself and recognizing yourself is a large stage of human development. And then taking that recognition and then kind of subverting it somehow. So by making the mirrors vibrate. Mm -hmm. So when you lock up to a mirror and expect to see yourself, you know, we all have either some sort of vanity kind of trigger to check yourself out in the mirror or just to make sure that your shirt's still tucked in yeah. or just to see what's in there. You expect to see yourself a thing that you are very used to seeing and then by subverting that either through like the mirror vibrating or having it severely concaved and then you being presented with something that is you but is not the you that you expect to see really kind of intrigued me mm -hmm. and kind of like that was an interesting way to kind of break up that relationship yeah i think just working with the concept of reflection so interesting and multifaceted um, that reflection is a process that is both has facings both inward and outward and that there's this contradiction in approaching the mirror and then having your image be destabilized or fragmented and for me one of the things that it does is it it asks me to consider is this gaze that I'm invited into meant to be outward or is it meant to be inward? Because if I can't immediately recognize a, a stable, complete image of myself, maybe what Dana is asking me to do is gaze inward and to sense what I'm feeling rather than immediately what I expect to see. And the idea that, that gaze is like a, a feeling state yeah, that's really well put. I like that kind of that relationship with the gaze is, I think, the right way to kind of talk about that relationship, kind of seeing and, and being, mm -hmm. and then coming to terms with how you were involved in that conversation with yourself. Yeah, and our cultural expectations around how we see keep shifting, right? Mm -hmm. Like this whole idea of selfie culture, 
and I was thinking about you talking about people taking selfies in front of the, the most recent piece and selfie culture is just so weird this the the feeling that we can't just be present um that we need to see ourselves being present yeah. in order to know that <laughs> confirm that we are present uh but then there's so much that goes into kind of taking that selfie and and like being perfect within it. So you know you get the you figure out your angle and you figure out yeah. what is the most flattering way for you to be, which is an artificial experience. And then taking a selfie in either that piece in the galleries or the piece in the Beltline, which is the series mm -hmm. of concentric mirrored circles. It's intentionally hard to take your picture in. Yes. That. Like there is no way for you to look as good as you want to look in any of these things. Mm -hmm. But they're mirrors and they're cool, and they're like it's it's like take a picture of me, and then you get it, and your face is two feet long, and you got a droopy eye. That's kind of great, no matter how much you duck face into it. Like you're gonna look a little bit like Quasimodo, <laughs> and that kind of goes back to this. Like all right, I, this is not what I expect to happen right here. So I, I think that's re really interesting to kind of force that, that kind of disconnect and all, and hopefully, hopefully forming that reconnection kind of back with yourself. Yeah. But what a, what a beautiful offering, I mean, to complicate or like problematize how we see. Uh, I was really interested in that as soon as uh, we started examining work together and looking at moving bodies and where to situate an audience in relation to your work and that I could be looking at the front of somebody performing or looking at the, the back of the person in front of me or the front of the person in back of me um, through these many different surfaces and yeah expanding your sense of perception of not just what you see but how uh i think is so engaging yeah i think kind of finding ways to to take those kind of temporal and spatial expectations and and stretch them out mm -hmm. and or, or compress them in a way you know it's it just is all these things that complicate your expectation and then to take that expectation and then blow it apart or manipulate it and then hopefully we'll facilitate something mm -hmm. you know it's kind of and that's the thing it's like that's up to whomever's there experiencing it you know i can i can have my hopes but yeah you know, <laughs> <laughs> this is for you um one other thing Thing kind of on a different topic because I think it's often interesting to people um, to learn how we work like how artists work and it's also very unique to each artist how mm -hmm. they approach their work could you say something about um, what process is to you like I work in the afternoons I need a 20 minute nap I do you iterate a lot? Do you work in quick bursts? Like what, I don't just, what is like the process like for you? Yeah, I, I work a lot. I'm bad at being idle, just really bad at it. If I'm alone in a place for too long, I start to take apart a wall. Um, <laughs> of course you do. Yeah, so I don't go home very much because it needs to have all the walls it has. Um, so I, I, I'm here a lot. And so I come here in the afternoons usually, and I stay till quite late. Um, and I and I do work, I, I do a lot of repetition. So I kind of work through ideas. So I have like four or five things going on at once, like little seeds of things, little 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 piddly things. Like I take time to piddle, mm -hmm. and I forget to sometimes. So I have can just like finding a thing like, oh, this is interesting. Let's chase that for a minute, and let's chase this for a minute. Um, so most of my after, like most of my time in the studio is spent kind of chasing different ideas while I have something bigger going on. So if I'm working on like the large mirror in the, in the galleries, you know, I'll work on that for, you know, 
four hours, I'll have an hour and a half of goofing around yeah. or reading or taking a nap. Um, but kind of the process kind of from start to be start to finish, like most of how I kind of work through ideas is I'll be just navigating life and something will kind of turn me on or activate me. You know, like that's cool. Or that's, that's like, that made me feel something. Why did I feel that way? Um, or, or like just things that spark my attention and like, all right, how can I turn that thing that I just had into an experience that I can then share? Mm -hmm. So that made me think about how I am in here. Like let's, how can I finagle that into a, a very controlled, compressed space and kind of give that same sensation to other people? Um, and then it usually takes a long time for that to happen um, just through like it not working like constant failure which is fine it's just you know fail often and fail cheap and you're you're fine um so it took me a long time to like get the mirrors to vibrate the way that i thought was effective and it took a long time to figure out how to work with sound in a way that would affect you physically and affect you affect your you know auditory sense of a space um kind of the mirror thing is like the, the painting on the mirror kind of to find the rhythm of that of like how that worked and I still I have no idea if that's working or not those are pretty new so I'm just making a lot of them and the ones that suck that's fine yeah you know you just stick them somewhere else and then try the new one so it's just a lot of work um, and then I have to remind myself that I have to go out and experience stuff because I get so bogged down with working that I've forgotten to figure out why or what what's what what excites me about it or yeah. or finding the new stuff that is exciting that I want to chase next. Sure. And, uh, but it's the thing I was saying earlier, like that invitation to enter your body, that invitation to slow down. Mm -hmm. It's that's the gift of an art piece. I feel like more and more, I I just I feel that I feel like we need that collectively, socially. You know. Yeah, and then it's a communal thing, and I'm not sure how it's going to end up eventually. Like, I, I'm still trying to figure out the aesthetics of of the experience. I know I want it to be a dark, quiet mm -hmm. space with a very large projection of this yeah. moth light bulb Ooh, thing. Really cool. And then I'm thinking I'm gonna. So if you can like imagine the shittiest plastic lawn chair, mm -hmm. um, I want to carve it out of wood. So it becomes this very stable, secure kind of the kind of the feeling when you sit in a really good wooden chair that yeah. is like fits your body, and it also transmits like the the scent, like the the resonance of the experience. It, it, it can you know reverberate through the entire structure, yeah. um, and have a couple of those, and have them look old and beat up, like yeah. not brand new from the store but look like they sat out under an oak tree so there's that black shit in the seat where the water just stood and the mosquitoes yeah. died in there um to kind of have it to kind of have that be the way that you interact with it kind mm -hmm. of have this, this this kind of a throwaway moment of like low aesthetics and this thing but it, it becomes very embodying and very like personal and mm -hmm. hopefully rich but yeah it's fun it's just people sitting waiting to watch moths mm -hmm. for like an hour mm -hmm. yeah so makes sense to me um yeah i think the only other stuff that we talked about i'm not sure we can talk about is kind of the kind of the ghost vibrations mm -hmm. is that worth talking about or should we Yeah, why don't you, okay, describe, describe that moment at the end. At the end? <laughs> yeah, so I think a lot of my work is a big setup. Um, and it's like elaborate and, you know, very detailed and kind of with that minimalist aesthetic that is everything is crisp and correct and it looks good and and very labored over and the installations are all big and they're usually like you know way too expensive so um 
but it's they're all there and kind of the, the circumstances of the installation or the performance are all kind of like the MacGuffin for the moment when it's over. So usually these things generate, you know, an intense amount of stimulation or durationally you're, 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 you're subjected to kind of this noise, which is not grating, but it's enveloping and the sensation of your, of your body vibrating for a while, especially with our work that we did together. You know, you're, you're, you're 25 minutes, you're sitting there on a vibrating bench and you're enveloped in sound in a very acoustically, like, acoustically live room. So the sound is all around you and you're watching these, you know, you and, and the other dancers move based on this, you know, audio that I engineered. And then behind them are these vibrating mirrors which show you yourself, the dancers, and then everything that's happening behind you, which is another set of dancers and another set of vibrating mirrors. And it's this spatial and temporal and, and, and kind of just, it's in a very intense space and you're there for 25 minutes. And a lot of, a lot of it was just getting people to be in that space for 25 minutes under the, under the guise of this is a dance performance, you know, and you guys made a beautiful series of movements that kept people engaged for you know, 25 minutes and then it stopped. And the vibration stopped, and the sound stopped, and and you guys stopped, and you know I liken it to like you drive for five hours on the interstate uh, through Alabama with bad roads, and then you pull off to get gas, um, and you you're, you still feel the road. Your body, mm-hmm. you know, in order for it to continue to take in information, it's like all right, I have to deal with this stimulation. This stimulation is now my new normal, and that's fine. I'm just going to file this away. This is normal. The old normal's gone. This is my new normal. So I can still take in the road, take in whatever. Um, and so with, you know, the, the vibration and the sound and the stimulation just had to become the new normal for them to still watch you guys and, and then take in that moment, take in that performance. And then it stopped. And in that moment, like when you pull off to get gas on the interstate, your body, you still feel the road. You still, you know, and you, in this installation, you still felt the vibration and the pressure from the sound. Um, but it was, it was kind of the ghosts of that. And what that is, and kind of a thing I use this a lot for, is you're feeling your body still in a way that you're not used to feeling your body still. Mm-hmm. You're, feeling your, you're feeling yourself kind of come to terms with its actual kind of the reality that it's subjected to most of the time and focusing on your presence and your physicality in in a way that you're not used to and so that moment that like 10 seconds or more or less where you're there with yourself alone and in that case you're so you're with yourself alone with everybody else doing the exact same thing that's what that whole thing was about you know that you know six months of planning and work was about the 10 seconds after the sound stopped and you guys stopped moving and to have that that little bit with yourself. Yeah, and I mean, it's one of the reasons why I adore all things ephemeral, um, because ultimately that work gets cataloged. You know, the permanent collection for Mm -hmm. that work is internalized. It's like in the bodies of all the people that were present you are they, the archive. Yeah. We are the yeah, archive the, of the, our own. The vessel of the body becomes the archive for the meaning and memory of that entire piece. Yeah. Which is incredible. Yeah. And it's then it's gone. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, the benches still exist and the electronics and the wires still exist, but it'll never be that thing again. And I'm okay with that mm-hmm. because it's, it's, it's in us. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's as, as horrible as that sounded, it's, you know, it is like that, that the memory of that is the important part. Yeah. Kind of that, that moment you had with yourself was kind of the reason for that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully, you know, the, the mirror inside kind of has a moment of that, like being in the middle of that disorienting space for just a couple of minutes. And then stepping out, it's like, oh, I'm not dizzy anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm, I can actually focus on one point. Um, 
and it's it's a much smaller, shorter experience. But there's still a little bit of that, I hope.